Hi, this is Jack Bottom with Galen Healthcare and the ConnectR reporting webcast and administration will begin now. So a few things we're going to go over today are uh, reporting within ConnectR and then a, a few administration uh, features. One of, the report, uh, one of the reports we'll go over is auto reports, and this will track uh, changes and modifications made within ConnectR. We'll also go over utilization reports, um, which will provide utilization reports for translation tables, scripts, um, things of this sort. We'll also touch on statistical reports. There's historical uh, statistics and detailed, detailed statistics. Um, we'll also touch on documentation of interfaces. Um, and this is simply extracting mappings that are made within ConnectR. Um, we'll also go into the maintenance, sort of keeping ConnectR clean, um, deleting message definitions, um, and the ability to merge message definitions and a few other things. Um, and finally, we'll end with um, the ConnectR tool belt, which is a add-on reporting tool belt. Um, and finally, we'll end with uh, questions and answers. Uh, and please, uh, just to sort of lay the ground rules, uh, I'll, I'll probably be going, up, or we'll be um, dealing with the questions towards the end of the uh, webcast. Thanks. Okay, so this is a uh, pick our, uh, sample of what the reports in uh, Connect are. And as you can see, um, there's the audit trail, which is the first one we're going to touch on. Um, other ones available would be the detailed statistics and historical st statistics, as I mentioned earlier, and um, a handful of usage or utilization reports. Um, and as you can see here, they're listed. Nicely. Also, uh, something we'll be going over is the TCP IP port uh, report. Okay. Okay. And um, within auto reports, we'll go over the importance of the auto reports and uh, how you how you're able to filter with these auto reports. So I will go into ConnectR and run one of these reports. Okay, as you can see, I've already logged into ConnectR, um, and what we we'll want to do is, I have, it's already set on monitoring status, um, which isn't too important for reports, but, uh, so we'll click on reports, and we'll select the audit trail. Now first, um, you can see a few things that you're able to select. Um, and as I mentioned before, the two things you're able to filter on, which is activity and user. Um, you can see some of the selections for activity, um, activation, deactivation, um, let's see, some other stuff. Login, which is simply just how many times this user is logged in. Um, and message definition edit. Uh, and, as, and as you can imagine, these can, these can all be very uh, useful if you're uh, for instance, trying to track down a mapping change, and you know you see something uh, on your interface that is a huge difference. You're like, oh no, I, I wonder how this happened. This is a good way to go in and check. Um, so I'll I'll go in here and expand the date range and build this report. So you can see there's been a lot of activity uh, within this ConnectR. Um, and you see the first column here is user. Um, we'll scroll down a little bit. Most likely, it will be all IDX admin for this ConnectR. Um, and also, as you can see here, uh, there's a nice color key down at the bottom, uh, and it goes in to say edit activities. And as you can see here, we've there's a uh, message definition edit. Um, it also, excuse me talks about activation and deactivations. Um, deletion here looks like a, a system definition was deleted. Import, export, uh, merges, um, and we'll actually touch on merges a little later. Um, 
and then all other activity. Okay, and so I'll go in here and just try filtering um, on user and activity just so you get an idea. Um, so let's see, we'll go with message definition edits. And you can see it, during this date range, this is, these are the only message definitions that occur, or me message definition edits that occurred. Um, something else I'd like to show you um, that becomes very useful when running the auto report is uh, creating a username or a unique username. By creating a unique username, this allows you to track um, track any edits or changes much easier. Because and if you think about it, you know a lot of times, and I know personally, I'll go on into the IDX admin and. And I know a lot of the other uh, my Galen employees will go on and you know we'll just use IDX admin. But if you want to track down and you know contact the person and say why did you make this change, it, it makes it a little difficult. So what you can do is go up here, file new, um, and you can just type in the username. So we'll just call this test two for now. Um, hit OK. And a lot of times um, I'll just copy IDX admin. Because I mean that's a lot of times that's the username I'm using anyway, so I just want the same rights and settings. Okay, so you can go in here, hit save. Okay, and um, I can open up reports again. Go into the audit trail. And we should see that user now with now in the uh, or available in the uh, audit report. Okay, and now we have arrived at the first poll question. One second, having some technical difficulties. And here's the first poll question. Um, I'll, I'll give about a couple minutes to respond. And I'll just sort of touch on auto notification for uh, anyone who is unfamiliar. Uh, it essentially, just um, allows you to set uh, their settings within ConnectR to send notifications when um, certain thresholds or uh, criteria are met. So, for instance, if you set a threshold for an interface, say, you know, notify me when there are 200 messages in the queue, and you can ha have a, an email sent. Okay, I'll, I'll give about 30 more seconds. It looks like there's about um, a quarter or so left that hasn't responded. So if you'd like to, please do so.
Okay. Now we'll, we'll touch on utilization reports. Uh, my favorite one is the TCP IP uh, report. Uh, essentially, it allows you to see all of the IP addresses and ports um, that are available, uh, or that are sorry, that are being used, and I, also I guess that the ports that would be available, um, and we'll also um, run some uh, utilization uh, reports for scripts and translation tables. Um, and as you can see here, I have a sample utilization report for the relationship translation table. Um, and once we open up ConnectR, we'll sort of see how this is generated. But um, if you look here, it says, um, you know, source system, and then it identifies the, the message type, uh, the target system uh, with message type for the target, and then um, the order. Uh, the order, um, I can go in a little more detail about that uh, a little later. Essentially what this tells me here is, excuse me, essentially what this tells me is um, since they're all the same order, the this translation table is used in the same, within the same mapping. Um, and I'll open up ConnectR now and run a few reports. Let's go back to the monitor status screen. Um, Okay, and first we'll run the TCIP uh, report. I really like this when implementing new interfaces. Um, it gives you an idea of what ports are available. Um, and also, if you're, uh, a lot of times if you have an outbound interface, it's, not, it's nice to see which, I, which IP addresses you're pointing to and which ports you're pointing to. Um, and as you can see here, they're all the same IP address that um, they're all inbound, so they're all coming to this server, most likely. And, uh, and you can see the ports are all different, which is good. One second. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and um, generate some reports for uh, translation tables, and then uh, I can I'll run one for with for scripts as well. Oh, that is the right default report. That's not what I was looking for. Okay, translation table usage. So I'll go down and um, let's see. I'll select this translation table. Um, by selecting the translation table, it allows you to identify the translation table, and by building a report, we'll see that it will tell you which mappings this translation table is used in. Um, and if we look at this report, uh, similar to what, what was in the slide, uh, indicates the source system, um, the message, target system, target message, and the order. Um, and this is very useful when um, making edits to translation tables. So, for instance, if you know you need to add a value to a translation table for, uh, let's, let's use file patient as an example, you you would need to know, you need to look to see where this translation table is being used within file patient merge to see if it would affect it negatively. And the same same approach should be taken when um, editing scripts. Uh, we can go in here and run a script report. Um, let's see. I'll try running this one here. 
And as you can see, this script is being used uh, between this uh, the dictionary source and the dictionary target for and so it's being used with file referring provider and also file charge code. Okay, and I will want run one more report. As you see, I ran this report. Um, doesn't provide us with a whole lot of information, but essentially this is saying this this script is not being used. Um, so it gives you a good idea of, uh, you know, if you edit this script, it, it probably wouldn't affect, uh, or wouldn't affect any mapping until you used it. Okay. Now we will touch upon statistical reporting. And as I mentioned earlier, there are two types of reports you can run for statistics. There's the detailed statistics, statistics and historical statistics. I like the historical much more than the detailed. The detailed um, provides some information, um, but the historical, I think, provides much more um, and much more useful information. Um, and you can see here, this is a, a sample of what a historical report looks like. And I know it's kind of small, so we'll we'll go into Connect R and generate our own. Um, and here, this is a detailed statistic report. Uh, and as you can see here, um, it, it's a good it's a good way to measure and or in, and figure out how many messages are processed uh, per message per date uh, within one interface. Uh, and so we'll go in and create some of these uh, some of these reports. Okay, we'll run the detailed statistic report first. Um, and you can see there's a few filters um, that uh, we're provided with. Um, we can select the the system, and then uh, and we'll go with uh, we'll select the registered target. Um, and you also have the ability to, to filter on uh, message type. And we'll want to just expand the day range out just so we get some good data. So from this report, uh, we're able to tell uh, or get an idea of how many uh, file patients, for instance, were processed on, the, on July 6th. Um, and we can tell we can see that it's 28, um, and also uh, there are 16 errors on July 14. So we'll have to look into that. Okay, now we'll go in and uh, run the historical statistic report, which I find much more useful. Um, and again, we filter on the source, so we'll, we'll select the red shit target again. Um, and we'll expand the date range, and we'll build a report. So you can see, uh, the system is, is indicated here, um, and then the target and uh, the uptime. And uh, if you look up top here, it, there's a range for uh, for one hour, so this is 12 to 1, this is 1 to 2 a.m., this is 2 to 3 a.m. I'm just going to scroll over to um, see where uh, possible messages may have processed. Okay, so we can see between 5 to 6 a.m., there are about uh, 1,800 transactions, um, and uh, it took about 77,000 milliseconds. And that, that's something to take note of. This is in milliseconds, this number here. Um, and also down here, this is very useful information. Um, it, it, it can tell you that 131,000 messages were processed during this date range. Um, and then it will say the number of uh, errors and give you an error percentage. Um, and this, uh, the transactions per second is very helpful um, when uh, performing bulk loads, um, or sort of the period before the bulk load. Uh, essentially allows you to uh, 
it's a measure, um, and it, to anticipate how long it may take. So you say you uh, run, uh, you know, 10,000 messages, um, and you're anticipating running about 100 or 200,000 messages. You can use that as a, as a measure to see how long your see how long it may take to do the 100,000 or 200,000 messages during the bulk load. Something also that's very useful um, is you're able to print this. And you can see it, it, uh, it renders in a different format here. Um, and this icon up here actually allows you to export it. Um, and if you look at the save as type or so the format you'd like to save it as, you can see that there are a few different ones. The Excel format is very helpful, um, much more friendly uh, format. Um, so you can go ahead and export that out uh, so you can view this in an Excel sheet. Okay, and now we have arrived at the second poll question. So I'll bring that up. And I'll give a minute or so uh, to answer this. Okay, it looks like uh, most everyone has responded, and I'll close the poll. And I'll actually provide the results um, so everyone has an idea of how everyone responded. Okay, so we've, sort of, we've finished up the, um, the reporting portion of the webcast. Um, for Connect R, uh, and now we'll sort of get into exporting mappings, um, the maintenance, um, so a little more administrative features, and then finally finish up with the Connect R tool belt. So something that's useful within Connect R is the um, is a way to export a mapping um, and save it as. Uh, an Excel sheet, or uh, you can actually see here down at the bottom um, the, the, the uh, format you're able to save it as. Uh, so a document, rich text file, PDF. Um, and we'll go into Connect R and actually try exporting one of those. So we'll go into Definition, Mapping, and we'll bring up the, uh, the red shed mapping for um, the ADT to the file patient. As long as my computer, oh, there you go. Okay. So this is a screen I'm fairly familiar with. Um, you'll go in here. This is where you'll make any edits to the mapping. Um, and so what I'll do here is go in and select print from file. And from here, we're able to export it out, um, the screen we've seen before. Uh, and we'll have the Excel and the Word um, 
one thing I like about um, this export is the ability to export as a document a rich text file and run a doc diff. Um, and this, this can be useful when comparing uh, the test uh, mapping with the live with the live mapping of the same interface. So um, you know, if you want to sync them up, you could you could run this and then just make any changes to the test interface that are that aren't in that are in live but that aren't in test. Um, and something to be aware of with uh, when exporting is this is just a snapshot. So um, something to be cognizant of when you're saving it or uh, and sort of a way to um, a way to use that in your favor is you can when you're saving it you, you may write the date in um, or some indicator of uh, when this this exportation took place. Um, okay, and sort of uh, tying in the reporting with with uh, the, this exportation and translation tables and stuff. Uh, something you can do is so sort of just like going through the whole process, we can run this translation table, um, or sorry, we can run this report for translation table. Uh, so we, if we'd run a report for uh, AE, AEPM org ID translation table, as we'd seen before, it's, it's used within the red shed. So we can pull, we can pull this out uh, as an Excel format save that into our local desktop. Um, and then we can go in here, pull out this, pull out this, uh, oops, sorry, we go to file. So we go to file print, pull out this mapping. Um, and then finally we can go into the translation table itself and pull out the translation table. So we, you have all that information on your local PC and you can sort of um, do, mess around with it and um, sort of see all the information in front of you um, in, a, in a friendlier format. And so here's the translation table we're looking for. Um, and we can go in and select print. Um, and sort of it's the same thing with the mapping is you can go in here and export it out and select the type. Okay, now we'll touch on um, maintenance of ConnectR and uh, things you can do to sort of tidy up uh, and, and keep everything looking nice within ConnectR. Um, so we'll go over deactivating interfaces that aren't in use. Um, this may come up when interface started to get developed and it sort of faded off and uh, it's just been in, in the monitor status screen for say a couple of years. If you want to go up and clean that in, and in this could be in test or something where you you'll have some interfaces in in test and they haven't been, or they and they haven't moved to live and they don't it doesn't seem like they are ever going to move to live. You can go in and deactivate them. Um, we'll also go we'll also go over deleting. Um, we can go to we'll go over deleting message definitions. Um, we can touch on translation tables and then uh, finally I'll uh, go over the uh, the merge tool within ConnectR. Okay, so if we go under definition here, select system. Um, actually, let me go back to monitor status here. So we have three interfaces here. You can see, and this one down at the bottom, the order, or the uh, order result. It's it's there. It's been there for a year, six months, and it's it's turned off the whole time, and it, no one ever touches it. So. I want to go and deactivate it and just sort of remove it from the monitor status screen so I don't have to work it, you know, just sort of take it off the plate of things available. So we'll go into monitor, or uh, sorry, definition system, select the result source, and you can see down here at the bottom left, uh, there's the option of, the, uh, there's the, the ability to deactivate. So we'll select this here, and we'll go up to save. Okay, and now we'll go back to monitor status, and as you can see, it auto refreshed, and now we only see the two interfaces, the register and the dictionary. I'm gonna go back in and activate that, because um, so that was more of a hypothetical situation, but um, 
So you can see how that can be useful. Okay, and now we'll go into um, potentially deleting a, uh, a message definition. So we'll go in here, select this. Um, well, you'd, you'd go under edit here and you'd select, you'd go ahead and try to delete it. And <clears throat> this dialog bo box pops up and it's sort of warning, I mean, if you want to think about it, it's uh, uh, the dirty way of seeing uh, where, uh, where this is used um, instead of running the report where it would be a much more nicer looking document and you can export it. Uh, but you can see that this is saying, you, we're not letting you delete this uh, because it's being used within these mappings. Um, I'm going to go in and try to find, I don't think this one's being used. Um, I'd just like to show you the difference between one that's being used and one that isn't. Looks like this is being used as well. Don't believe one of these, I don't think these are actually being used. Let's see. Okay, so this is the other the other box you'd see when trying to delete something. Essentially just checking to make sure that you actually want to delete it. Um, and a service safeguard. So you it's good because you know you don't want to go and delete something, but uh, and I'm actually not going to go and go ahead and delete this, but it's a good way of checking to see if they're being used um, and also cleaning this up if you'd like to bring it down to you know I mean we right now there are uh, let's see looks like five uh, acknowledge message or ACK is. So I could, I could bring that down to at least four now. I know that one is being used. Um, and you can always use these. The most likely they're, the acknowledgement message are going to be similar. Um, okay. And we can also um, do this for a translation table just to sort of go through the, the delete portion and see that um, it will pop up and say, you know, you can't delete this because it's being used in the mapping. So you'll see here, and we know this one's being used, um, and it, here it indicates. And see how it's sort of messy, it's hard to distinguish what's, what's actually using it. Um, it doesn't look like it's the full, yeah, because I think before we'd seen that there were still two other SIU uh, mappings with this. And we'll finally go and touch on um, the merge tool. And I really like this. Um, I like to keep my connect our databases clean um, and make sure, you know, I, I don't there aren't I don't see message definitions definitions in there that I don't know what they're doing. I have them clearly labeled. Um, and you can see here these these need to be labeled or relabeled, I should say. Um, and just, you know, this is description is HL seven underscore ACK, HL seven underscore ACK live. Um, a lot of times I'll go in and, and indicate which uh, ACK is this for. So I'd say, you know, this is an ACK for um, SoftLab or uh, TouchWorks PM. Um, so I'll go ahead and select this here. Um, and actually, before we do this, I know there's another slide uh, that sort of touches on message merge. So this is the screen we're just looking at. Um, this is an example of uh, trying to, to merge ADTs. Uh, and you can see, um, so you select a master message up top here, uh, and all of the other messages, all the other ADTs within this Connect Our Database become available. And you can, and they, there's a select box over here on the right. Um, but we'll go back into Connect Our and see what's available. Okay, so we're on the acknowledgement message. We can go here and select one. If you look up, if you look down below, uh, two two buttons uh, became active. Once compare, once merge. A lot of times, I like to compare before I merge these, um, just to get an idea of if you'll, there'll be any problems. And it, so you can see here, and this is the message we'd seen before. Uh, this merge can proceed. There aren't any major issues. Um, and so I, let me let me just backtrack a little bit to give you an idea of uh, when you might, might want to use this merge. Um, so if you haven't, uh, for example, um, so you have you know, five result interfaces inbound. 
um, and you want to bring in another result interface or you're, you're, you're uh, implementing a new result interface. So you import that into ConnectR, um, and a lot of times, pretty much every time, you'll have the file result call uh, from uh, the, the, uh, the store procedure, um, file result call. And I like to keep, typically I like to keep, you know, one uh, file result call within my ConnectR database. And so without having to redo any of the mappings or change, um, changing the mappings around, I can go in and merge the file result calls together and it will bring in the, from the file result that was from the existing interface, it will bring the new file result call and combine those two. And so now if I was to make any edits to that file result within ConnectR, it would be for both the, the result interfaces. Um, and I know that may be uh, a little confusing, so if there are any questions later, I'll, uh, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, let me see. There is, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to sort of go through an example um, with the merge tool where uh, you may see some errors come up. Um, so let's go to the file doc works here, and we'll select the only other file doc works transcription, um, and we'll compare them. And as you can see, a few errors have come up. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And there are actually two kinds of errors. There's the non-fatal and there's the fatal. Non-fatal basically means you can go ahead with this merge um, and, and there won't be, any, you know, like, you can, well, it will, Connector will let you go forward with the merge. But you can see here the master value of the um, V11 uh, dot one live is patient R MRN at uh, the fourth node, and the duplicate value is organizational MRN. So if you were to merge these now, you can see that. Um, so the 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 duplicate or the um, child uh, message stuff right here will get pulled into the master. Um, so essentially, what's going to happen is the what was organizational MRN is now going to be patient MRN within across the board, and so it may be a little confusing if you knew you had mapped something to organizational MRN and now it looks like patient MRN. So just something to be aware of. Um, and then you can see here the fatal error. This is saying you can't proceed with the merge because, um, and if you look, uh, it might be hard to see, but it says do not, it says it can't match because of data types. Uh, so, actually, we'll go in. Um, I'm going to open up the message definitions just so you can see what that means. Um, and I think I'll, I can just check. I think it was uh, node 27. Yeah, so that was parameter 27 or node 27. So, we'll go into the message definition. So, I went to definition, message, and we'll go to file doc works. Okay. And this was the master one. And as we can see here, uh, the, the fourth node is patient MRN. So if we were to merge those, every, any file docs work transcription would say patient MRN with, on parameter four. And we want to find parameter 27. So we can see here, this data type is a character 255. Um, and if you, pull, you click on this drop down, you can see there are some options available. Um, and now let's open up the other file doc works here and scroll down to parameter 27. Okay, and we can see this is Boolean. So this merge wasn't allowed because the data types weren't the same. It's saying if we merge this, you know, like, or it, bad stuff will happen. So um, we would have to go in and change these, uh, the data types. Since it's a flag, I'd want to keep this as Boolean and change the other one back to Boolean. Um, but um, we can do that. Uh, that's that's for another webcast. Okay, and we have one more topic to touch on. But before that, I will post one another uh, poll question. And I'll, uh, yeah, so I'll give roughly um, a minute or so for this one.
Okay, it looks like most people have finished, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of delay here on my end. Just one sec. Okay. And finally, we'll touch on the Connect Our Tool Belt. Um, this is a very useful, um, very useful tool, it, it, and it's an extension. Um, well, not necessarily extension, but it's, a, it's an add-on reporting tool. So it's, it also can generate reports um, that are very useful to analyze data within ConnectR. So I'll open up ConnectR here, um, and right now, okay, here we go. Go to Monitor, Tool Belt. I'll just go back to the slides to sort of touch on those points. Um, as you can see there, I opened it up within the application, so it's built directly within ConnectR. Um, it's built upon the SQL Server reporting services, um, and you may see when I try to run the report, you may see a familiar spin wheel. Um, and currently, uh, we're expanding it. Uh, you know, we're we're open for suggestions and making changes here. So, um, and today I will touch on the top three here. Um, and sort of bring time in together to see how they can be used. So first, I will run the error summary. Okay, and you can see here, back out of this, there's a few filters. Um, well, two, I guess. so there's two filters, one's a system, and then uh, there's a date range you can specify. So I'll go in here and use the result. No, a target as an example. And you can see you can scroll over here at the bottom to actually review, review the report. Okay, and as you can see, it provides a nice pie chart. Um, which wouldn't necessarily be in the reporting section of the ConnectR. Um, and here there's a little key that indicates the green are negative 195 errors, uh, the blue are negative 100s, and the purple are negative 145s. Um, we'll go down here, and towards the bottom you can see also there's, not, there's some, a bit more information. Um, indicates the error ID, um, the error text, so sort of just a short description of the error and the count. Um, okay, and um, it looks like we have uh, a few negative 145s. So I'll go in uh, and use another report. Uh, oh, I can just go this way. Another report within the tool belt. Um, to sort of look into the negative 145 a little deeper, uh, and you will see how this works in a second. So I'm going to use the find HL7 message values. Click on this here. And you can see there's, there's a few more inputs here on the screen. Um, and as you can see, we'll want to select the system, so we'll want to select that as the result again. When next to it is the error ID. Um, we're going to touch upon, we're, we're going to go and look into the negative 145 as mentioned. Uh, we'll keep the date range the same. And this portion right here is specific to uh, the HL7 and um, indicating the HL7 fields. So uh, those of you familiar with HL7, you can see PV1-7 um, is a particular field with, uh, within messages. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to indicate new, uh, new fields. Oh, I want this to be OER3. Okay. So make this OBR3. Um, I'm going to make this OBR4, and I'm going to change this to OBX3. And you'll see why in a moment. 
And so what, what these fields are here are, uh, they're indicating which fields you'll be able to view within the report. Um, and I'll, I'll just build a report because it may be a little easier to explain why I, would, why I picked those fields from the HL7 message. Okay. And, and, and you can see within the report, there's the message ID uh, within ConnectR. There's the date. Um, and then OBR3, as I indicated, which in this case is uh, in most likely the accession number. Um, so a unique number specific to that message. So it provides us something to filter on when we're going back into ConnectR and tra trying to uh, track down that message. Uh, and you can see OBR4 would be the orderable. Um, and OBX3 would be the resultable. So I'm, I'm fairly familiar with ConnectR at this point, so um, I know exactly what negative 145 is without having to check. It's essentially saying that the resultable is not correctly linked up with the orderable. So now it may make, may make sense why I have view, I have listed here uh, the orderable and also the resultable. Okay, and one other thing I'd like to touch on is the error trends. And we can go in, select the result target. So apologize for the, uh, the uh, disk space there. And we'll go ahead and generate that report. So this provides a chart um, of the frequency of errors from this certain date range of this target. So you can see this is uh, this can be very somewhat use, fairly fairly useful. Um, you know, you can go ahead and you'll be able to track down when you were having the most errors um, during a during a day or period of time, and you can sort of use that to analyze what may have been going on during that period of time, why there may have been those that those <clears throat> that number of errors. Um, and as you can see here, this indicates that. On the 22nd and the 24th, there were eight errors, which is the most on this chart here. And this is just the 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 a view of the uh, connect our tool belt, what we were just looking at. Okay, and that that finishes it up for now. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, please submit those now, and I will I will respond. Thank you.
Okay. So one of the questions uh, one of the questions asked is how will you know what field you want to view? Um, and my interpretation of this is how do you know what field you want to view when running the um, the find here, I'm just gonna go back in. Oh. Okay, when running the find HL seven report within Connect Our Tool Belt. And it's actually will it will require a little bit of research before going in and running this report. Um, you'll you'd want to get a sort of a good grasp of the error beforehand. Um, so when you were to run the report, you know exactly which HL7 message you wanted. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. I think, uh, so for negative 100, um, that's a fairly common error. Uh, it essentially, is a, you can't find the patient data. Um, so let me try to go in here and uh, let me see if there's a message available. I'm not quite sure there will be. But if you can you can go in and look at the message, um, and if you know something about the patient, um, you can sort of use that knowledge to then identify information within the message that you may want, um, and then from there, it it would be just indicating which field it is that you want, and I can sort of point out what a um, what a field is within an HL7 message once I find the message. Okay, I was actually meaning it. So there there's a message here. Um, this is a file appointment message, um, and when you're in ConnectR, you can see uh, on the source side here, this is the HL7 message, and this file appointment is the store procedure uh, that is used to um, file the data into the works database. Um, so we'll go ahead and open up the HL7 message. Um, so for a negative 100 error, um, we so for sort of taking steps um, when when troubleshooting this, you'll want to go in, so we want to go in and identify the error, uh, understand it as clearly as possible, and from there you can go in and identify the information within the HL7 message you need. So with the negative 100, it's um, a good example because uh, we can we can go and get a lot of our information from the PID segment or the patient identification segment. Um, and we can see here, uh, there's the patient name available, and that's PID5. Um, so I'm just going to write down PID5 here uh, on the paper in front of me. Sorry. Um, we can also go in. I'm just going to scroll down. Okay, actually, not much information down there. But as you can see, there's a lot of information uh, available typically within this segment. So um, the social security number would be here, which is obviously unique to the patient. Um, other information we'd want to, we could use is um, the date of birth um, or even uh, an MRN or a patient ID. Um, so we'll run the we'll run the report for negative one hundreds um, with the patient name uh, and um, I'll go ahead and use the OBR3 again as a unique identifier uh, to track down the message, and we'll also do um, patient date of birth, and we can see that this is the PID segment, and, and this is field 7 here. So I want to go ahead and record that. So now if we were to go back into the tool belt, you can see we still have find HL7 message value, or the uh, this report available, um, and that was in the red shed. We'll keep this date range. We'll indicate here that it's negative 100, um, and uh, we'll go ahead here and um, indicate OBR3. Um, the left part of that, so I'll do PID 5 and also PID 7 for date of birth. Um, and we'll go ahead and try viewing the report. So 
it doesn't look like there may have been uh, negative 100 for the red shed, but we can go in and go to file results. Okay. So you can see here, again, it provides the message ID, the date of the message, uh, the accession number, the patient's name, and the patient's date of birth. Um, and you can go in and um, then hopefully into the database or um, through, the all, through all scripts, just sort of query, query the database and try to locate this patient. Um, and a lot of times with negative 100, you'll go, you can, you'll just go in and use the bridge tool, um, which is definitely very useful. Another question was going in and creating a username. And uh, to do that, we go into admin on the left here, select user profile. And here is where all of the usernames are located. So you can view, you can see here that there are um, six usernames currently. Um, and to create a new one, simply go to File, a new. And from here, you can indicate the uh, the username that you'd like. And so we'll say test eight, and go ahead and say okay. And as I mentioned before, a lot of times when creating usernames, it's easy just to take the configuration of an existing username. So if there's a username, you, excuse me, if there's a username you're used to using, you can go ahead and copy the configuration for that username. Um, which makes it really easy when generating the new username. So I like IDX admin. Um, I use it quite often, so I'll go ahead and select that. Save it. And actually, the username um, takes on, or the username's new password is the username. So what we'll do is um, go in and try logging in as test date once it's finished saving. Okay, it looks like we can log out. I'll just X out. I'm just gonna have to go and <clears throat> start a new instance of Connect R. Go ahead, start it up. And actually, I need to change the username or sorry, the, uh, the server name. Oh, I don't think that's spelled correctly. Okay, and okay, so we wanna log in as test eight, the one we just created, and you can say test eight and test Did work. One sec, maybe I misspelled the use the uh, password. Hmm. Having trouble with my keyboard. <laughs> Okay, I'll have to look into this a little further. Um, I'm not quite sure why this the username isn't working, but we can log in as IDX admin. And I think I have one more question. I'm just gonna go look at that now.
Okay, and I've, I've had this question asked a few times, um, how, how uh, where, where can you get the Connect Our Tool Belt? Um, and that's actually something that Galen developed. Um, and if you'd like uh, more information, you can uh, you can email me, um, and I can and I can forward that on. Um, so and actually, uh, my email is uh, zak period f j e l d h e i m at Galen Healthcare. Uh, and one more time, that's zak dot Galen or sorry uh, zak dot F J E L D H E I M at Galen Healthcare. And the the remaining uh questions I can uh respond to uh each of you in an email. Um, so I appreciate everyone for joining today. Um, and uh hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.